Kalimera Kebali. Good morning to everybody. Sorry for the short delay. We're expecting his eminence to uh, be here for the invocation. Unfortunately, he won't make it today, but he'll make it either this afternoon or tomorrow. Can you hear me now? Yes. My name is Michael Alexander. I'm the president of the Pantheonic Federation of Florida. And I'm profoundly honored to introduce our distinguished guests and present the program of the day. In the last few days leading to today's event, we were struggling with the concept of the tone for today's festivities. The coal miners' strike over 100 years ago, which ended with the massacre of Ludlow, calls for a somber and a serious setting. However, the legacy of those who died for their rights and for social justice call for a celebration. So we chose a celebratory tone so we can all call and remember Luis Ticas and all the miners who died for what they believed in and their values in a happy and a bright way. And I cannot think of a better way, bright and happy way starting with the national anthem of the United States and Greece. Please rise. Of the Love 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 Massacre. 
Uh, Mr. Frank Manning would love to be here tonight, but unfortunately he died a few months ago. His grandfather fought side by side with Louis Tikas, and Mr. Manning gave this song to the unions all over the world, and he asked his asses to be scattered here, right? So let us uh, take one minute and then we'll listen to the song.
is honor to be in this historic city of Trinidad. I would like to thank the museum, Mr. Mike Romero and his wife, Yolanda Romero, the secretary of the museum that helped us to go through this uh, big event and the, the, uh, the statue that we're going to unveil today. And also a big thank to Mr. Bob Butero, the director of the Binary Mat Mine Workers of America. Also, I would like to thank the county administrator, Ms. Faison, and also the commissioners that they had a decision unanimous to name County Road 44 Luis Ticas Highway. <clears throat> Special, a county commissioner that is here with us today, Mr. Dean Modren. I don't know if I pronounce the name right, but he is a, 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 a Greek descent who his relatives work on the mines here in this area. Also, I would like to thank the mayor of this city, Mr. Phil Rico, the honorable council members, and the honorable city manager, the great son. We are all proud about this event today and the Louis Tickers. Luis Ticas is back. This time, is not laid down. He's standing up and sent out the message to everybody. And he's gonna be there for many, many, many years. See, the city today has a new identity with Louis Tickers. Louis Tickers sent a message to workers of America, sent a message to everybody he made all of us proud, the Greek American community, the Cretans, the Hellenes, everybody. Today is a historic day for everybody. This event and this statue will not be here today that all the donors help to become a reality. And I would like to thank the Ahepa chapter 145, Denver, Colorado, Elias Anastasopoulos, John Andrianakos and family, John Balafas and family, Michael Buparis, Chapter Griffs of Denver, Gus Damis, Stanley Ketchos, Pancretan Association of America, 
Βασίλης Πανταζόπουλος and Family, Ρουμελιώτας of Colorado, Βασίλειος Σέρβος, Bill Schutis, John and Alexandros Stamatoglu. Without you, this statue would never be here. I would like to thank all of you. To the podium, we would like to invite, but I don't think he's here, the Greek uh, Consul General. Is he here already? I, no, he'll be here in a minute. He'll be here in a minute. So we'll skip the Greek Consul General <laughs> and we'll move directly to the Pancretan Association President, Mr. Eleftherios Dramatinos. Dramatinos. <laughs> I would just like to see you. Thank you very much. It is an honor to be between all of you today. My name is Eleftherio Dramitinos, I'm the president of the Pancretan Association. We are, uh, we can say we're standing a little bit extra more proud today, the Cretans, and it would not have happened without the spearheading of the Hellenic Association of Florida and especially Mr. Michael Servos. We have been talking for a very long time. Uh, he has been working tirelessly, of course. He had help from everybody. He had a lot of people to help him. I also like to recognize Tony Gonales uh, from PAA, 5th District Governor, for his uh, help and the venture. I wrote a bunch of notes here, but, uh, <laughs> you know, too much things, it's a uh, waste of time. I like to recognize two descendants of uh, Luis Ticas, Elias Spandudakis, who was from uh, Lutra, Retinocritis. There's two great nephews right here. had left his homeland under oppression way back when to come for a better life. And his accomplishment was, because he was innovating, to build better life for everyone else, all the way to today. He left his legacy behind. He was smart. He was witty, fearless. He did cost his life. But as we can see, it did not go in vain. So all I have to say is may his memory be eternal. Like uh, he said, you know, he's probably up there smiling and here a tie. Agoma, eonia tu imnimi. Thank you. We have with us the Consul General of Greece, Mr. Gregory Honorable, <coughs> Mr. Gregory Karahalios. Good morning.
morning to all of you. Uh, I drove from Los Angeles here, I just arrived, that's why uh, please forgive me for the slight late. Uh, we're here today, I think all of us, to pay tribute to one of those people that put, that they do something different in history. This person, Louis Tikas, came here, a poor Greek, like many others, to find a better life in the United States, like millions of other immigrants from all over the world. In those times, America was driven by coal and steel, and all this wealth was in the hands of a few corporations that were controlling practically everything. And labor force was very cheap and people in those times were working hard without any rights, without any help from the uh, federal government or the local government. <coughs> and the conditions were really very, very, very hard. The mining business was very lucrative for, for people like Mr. Rockefeller, but very tough for people like Mr. Tikas and all the other millions of, uh, of uh, workers. So uh, they had to do something about it, especially not only for the salaries, but also for the conditions, for the safety for everything. There were uh, the, amount of the, the amount of debt was mounting year after year and nobody seemed to care about it. So Tikas was in the forefront of those people that tried to, to change something in all this. And we all know about the, the events, uh, what had happened here. Uh, the strike that started with a year ago almost, before the, the, the tragic events. Uh, the people that were evicted from their homes and they were forced to live in tents, to, to create a tent town, let's say, but they continue, nevertheless, to, to be decent and to try for a better tomorrow. And then it came the state, but unfortunately it was one of the darkest hours, let's say, of the local government and the National Guard that instead of helping these people, instead of providing kind of security, uh, or at least a safe cordon between the two opposing forces, let's say, they took the wrong side. And this is how all these tragic events started, and we all know how it ended. Louis Tikas paid the ultimate price for his will to fight, for himself, but especially for the others. And that makes him an example for all of us, I think. After all these years, it's over a hundred years from, from the moment of his death, maybe we should think about, is it worth it what he did? Uh, did he achieve something? Well, the fact that we are here uh, today to pay tribute to him uh, is an evidence that he did something. Uh, maybe the results of what he did were more uh, clear uh, some years later. But Tikas was one of those people that changed history, that put his, his life in the line for, for the others. And he proved that even if you can kill people, you can never kill the ideas that these people are fighting for. So I would say uh, that today we have to see him uh, not as only as part of the history, but also as an example for all of us and for the generations to come because Tikas is something special. He's an example to follow. 
is a man who proved for another time that some ideas worth to fight and to die for. So uh, let's celebrate this day in his memory and let's always remember what he did for all of us as people, as Greeks, but also for his new land here for the United States and all the workers that today they have better rights because of people like him. So thank you very much. Uh, At this point, I would like to ask the president of the South Colorado Coal Miners Museum, Mr. Mike Romero, to come to the podium and tell us a few words. Mr. Romero is here. annual services for Ludlow and that's there uh, tomorrow. So uh, we had uh, service uh, last year uh, to honor those uh, victims that died in the Hastings explosion uh, and uh, they died on April 21st, uh, 1917 and uh, I believe there was around 40% uh, of that those people that died were of, of the Greek nationality. And uh, so they died there, but uh, what got me in that story was that uh, uh, these people uh, celebrated or commemorated the Ludlow Massacre uh, on that day, and they, the story said that there was over 3,000 people that attended that story. So, 
And that also was uh, a year before the United Mine Workers erected the monument there. This is actually the 100th anniversary of the erection of the monument. It was erected in, in uh, May 30th of, of 1918. So uh, that, that has been an, an ongoing. Uh, our international president always says that's Labor's Vietnam Memorial out there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, as uh, my brother uh, Michael Mero said, uh, you know, we stand on those people's shoulders. You know, I was a coal miner also. Uh, th what they did and what they died for out there uh, can never be in vain because we want to uphold them because the standard of living that uh, the average person, well, I don't care if you're a coal miner or what you do for a living, you owe it to them. And, and they kept that going for us. They fought for health and safety, which I uh, benefited directly from. The uh, mines were a lot safer and, and a lot better when I went to work for them. Uh, the economic conditions were very good for that situation. So, you know, we will hold this service as long as I can do it and as long as somebody else will pick it up and do it. But, you know, we need to honor those people that died and especially Louis Tikas for his role in making our lives better. Thank you. If the President of the United States can divert from the teleprompter, I take the liberty to divert from the teleprompter. <laughs> I just want to say, it's so refreshing to hear people that come totally unprepared to speak from their heart. Thank you. Both of you. Our next, our next guest to the podium is uh, the International Coal Miners Union President Cecil Roberts. Here? He's not here. He'll be here uh, later on. He's traveling down from Denver, but he'll. Not a problem. There will be space at the podium. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is the mayor of the wonderful city of Trinidad, Mr. Phil Rico. And also, do we have the city manager here, Greg? I guess they're traveling together. <laughs> not, not, not a problem. As, as Michael Service before said, we we really thank everybody on the city council for approving the renaming of uh, Highway 40, County Road, 44, County Road. Under 44. 44 to Louis Stickers. That's a great honor and a great accomplishment. As we move along, I want to mention a couple of names that are extremely, extremely important. Here with us we have Mr. Anthony Crinalis. He's a district governor of the Pancreton Association of America. And he has a proclamation for Louis Stickers and a special award. Okay. Uh, my name is Anthony Canales, and I live in Denver, Colorado, and uh, I'm a member of the Pancreaton Association of America, the local chapter, Cretes of Denver. I'm also a member of the HEPA Chapter 145 of Denver, Colorado. Uh, I received a proclamation from the city and county of Denver from the mayor. And I, it's not that long, so I believe I'll read it to you. Uh, whereas Louis Ticus was born in Rethanone Creek in 1886, immigrated to the United States filed for citizenship in 1910 and became a leader in the fight for better working conditions for miners in Southern Colorado in 1912. Whereas Louis Tikas became a main labor organizer for the United Mine Workers of America 
motivating mostly Greek American miners at the Ludlow camp during the historic 14th month strike in southern Colorado in 1913-1914. And whereas the September 13, 1913, the mine owners evicted the miners from their company homes and placed them into 10 villages after the mine workers called for a strike. And on April 20th, 1914, the Colorado National Guard and Colorado Fuel and Iron Guards attacked the 10th colony of 1,200 striking coal miners and their families. Whereas Louis Tikas was among dozens of mine workers and family members shot and killed on April 20th, 1914, during the Ludlow Massacre, the day after the Greek Orthodox Easter considered the bloodiest seminal event in Colorado Coal Wars, which in total produced a death toll of approximately 75 people. And whereas the Ludlow Massacre was the watershed moment in American labor relations described by historians, Howard Zinn as the culminating act of perhaps the most violent struggle between corporate power and laboring men in American history. And whereas Louis Tikas will be honored with a viewing of a statue at Trinidad Finders Memorial Park on this day, the sponsors of the City of Trinidad Foundation of Hellenism of America, Pancrete Association of America, United Mine Workers of America, Hellenic Republic Government, and the Southern Colorado Coal Miners Committee. Therefore, Michael B. Hancock, Mayor of the City and County of Denver, Colorado, by virtue of the authority vested in me, hereby officially proclaimed June 23rd, 2018, Louis Tikas Day. Uh, I have a copy for the museum and also one for my, Michael Zerbos, so we'll give him his now and then you can take some. I uh, met uh, Michael about six months ago. Uh, Lefteri Dramatinos, the president of PAA, uh, contacted me to make contact with Michael, and we worked together on trying to get people here this weekend. And I know that he had spent two years of his life on this project, working with various entities and municip the municipality and the county and the mine workers. And uh, for his effort, on behalf of the Hel Hellenes in the community of Colorado, I'd like to present him this award, Michael Severals, President, Foundation of Hellenism of America, in recognition of his hard work and dedication in making it possible for Louis Tika statue, Trinidad, Colorado, June 23, 2018, presented by the Hellenic community of Colorado. Thank you, Tony. I don't know what to do without Tony, because he's the chairman, and he, the chairman of this organization here, and he organized everything. Thank you very much, Tony. Sam Kamalis. That was my father that was just up here. He's spent a lot of time working on this too. Uh, I'm, the, I'm the vice president of the Denver Pretefs chapter. Our presidents come with us as well, Dimitri Brogalakis in the back. Um, we just wanted to thank everybody for involving us. It's very important that we uh, treasure our traditions, our culture, and our heritage, and also remember the, the, the sacrifices that our forefathers and you know, all that have given for us to be here and live the life that we live now. Especially as Americans, we take a lot of pride in that. So, I just wanted to thank y'all for having us here, and congratulations. Let's thank do it. Thank you. Mr. Cornelius, your son well, literally follows your footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Louis Dickers and all the coal miners that died, inspired poets, writers, songwriters, but also 
writers of books. And here with us today, we have a wonderful gentleman who wrote, uh, I think it's the first book ever written for Louis Dickers called Buried and Sun. And we have here with us to speak about the book, Mr. Papa Nicolas is here. Especially uh, Michael Zervas for uh, making this day possible and for inviting me here, and uh, the good people of Trinidad, and uh, especially United Mine Workers of America, who have continued to fight for uh, the lives and the health of mine workers. Uh, it's a great organization. Uh, what, I, what I want to talk to, to you about today is the education of Louis Tikas. And uh, I'll, I'll try and make this brief. Uh, Louis Tikas was born in a small Greek village uh, called Lutra on the island of Crete in 1886. He wasn't Louis Tikas then. His name was Elias Spantidakis. And in changing his name during his first years in America, he shows the change that he was undergoing in his life and outlook. In the basement uh, of this little stone house in Lutra, in which he was born, uh, you can still see to this day a very primitive machine. It's a, a millstone that would be turned by a horse or a donkey to extract the oil from the olive trees, which to this day cover much of Crete. It's the kind of machine uh, that he and other immigrants like him, and not just the Greeks, would be most familiar with. And he was going to the most industrialized nation on the face of the earth. You know, think of this, going from really uh, the late Stone Age overnight to the land of railroads and factories and steel mills. In 1906, he posed for a photograph just before he left Crete for the United States. Um, now, Crete had freed itself from the Ottoman Turks uh, just a few years earlier. And so Tikus was wearing the, the uniform, as it were, of the, the, the Cretan fighters that had gone back for generations in trying to free themselves <coughs> from their Turkish overlords. So he's wearing the fez and uh, the black breeches and the boots that the Cretans wore <coughs> in those days in the villages. In his sash was a flintlock pistol, and that shows you how far back this tradition of uh, the warrior going. <coughs> well, nothing is known of Tika's first days in America. Uh, he may have worked as a shoeshine boy in Denver. There's some mention of that. Uh, and he may have even wanted to join the Denver police force, but was rejected. Uh, in Denver, and now we begin to understand uh, his life a bit more. In Denver, he became co-owner of a coffee house on Market Street. Uh, Market Street, in those days, uh, was the heart of what workers called the slave market. Because this is where they would go to sign up for jobs in the mines, or on the ranches, or uh, working in the steel mill, 
uh, from labor agents. And uh, when I first went to uh, Market Street in the 1970s, there were still uh, boards listing uh, jobs that were available. Most of them were on the ranches in those days. Well, Tikus uh, was one of these immigrants who caught on to the English language uh, a little quicker than many of his fellow Greeks. He, he knew more, uh, he, he assimilated more readily to American ways, which were, were strange uh, to the Greeks. Uh, and so he translated for his, uh, his fellow Greeks in this coffee house and arranged, uh, explained uh, why you needed a license to this or that, or why you couldn't drink on Sundays, or why you shouldn't get in fights over cards. Uh, he was, you know, he was learning to be, he was, this was really his preparation to be an organizer uh, in this little coffee house. Uh, and at that time, maybe that's why he, uh, why he uh, wanted to join the Denver police force, to, to maybe mediate between the Greeks and the laws of the United States. Well, in 1912, he got a call from, uh, to come up to the, mine in, the mines in Frederick to help out a bunch of Greeks who were hired as scabs uh, during the strike in the northern field. When he got there, he found the conditions, of course, were terrible. The, these uh, uh, non-union workers were virtually held prisoners. And he led these Greeks out of the mine and into the Union Hall to sign up as members of the United Mine Workers of America. And when he did that, he was entering a new world. It was really, I think, his first steps in an American education. But we should talk a little bit about the United Mine Workers. United Mine Workers had been formed in 1890. And almost immediately, it made face a, a very difficult choice. The choice was when it closed its doors to the thousands of immigrants who were pouring into the United States uh, from Southern and Central Europe, primarily, and from Mexico and from other uh, countries. And what about all of the uh, black uh, men who had just uh, a quarter of a century ago, the you know, Civil War had ended. And these were workers, and they wanted to ride. So what was the, the mine workers going to do? And they made a decision, and it was a pragmatic decision. And the decision was, you open your doors wide. You open your doors wide to these immigrants and to these black men. And the reason was that if you didn't, you were just creating a whole army of scabs to break your strikes. And so the United Miners, I think, uh, I could be correct on this, I think it was the first major union to really have this kind of open door policy. Well, uh, so uh, in the fall of 1913, Louis Ticus was now a full-time organizer for the United my um, I called my book that, that I wrote about Louis T, because what I could discover about his life, Buried Unsung, and I called it, named it after a kind of fear that the Greek immigrants had, and the fear was that they would die in some lonely mining camp or out on a railroad uh, gang somewhere, and they would not be sung. In other words, <coughs> There would not be the, uh, the liturgy of the Greek church. There would be no priest to bury them properly. But as I worked on my book, I, I realized that that idea of dying on sun could, could stand for a lot of the immigrant workers of those days who, who died and were not remembered. And we're honoring Louis Ticus today, but we have to remember that... Uh, there was an Italian Louis Tikus, and there was a Polish Louis Tikus, and a Russian, and a Mexican. And these were 
men and women in the labor force who are not honored enough, and sometimes we don't even know their names. But uh, a lot of them are buried up there uh, in, the, uh, in the cemetery in Trinidad. You can see their, their gravestones. Uh, a lot of them died in, in Hastings, uh, as we just heard. And this, this was part of American life. Uh, part of the uh, the rough life of a union organizer. Well, uh, Luigi went to Ludlow, Colorado, uh, when the strike of 1913-14 broke out, and at Ludlow, the largest uh, of the union tent camps had been up, uh, set up to, to uh, hire the uh, to house the uh, the union miners who had been more or less thrown out of their company houses. And Ticos became the unofficial mayor of that Ludlow camp. There were about a thousand people in it. Uh, he also got his dream of becoming a cop because with a thousand people you had to have a little police force. And the police force was made up of men of every major ethnic group so they could speak in their own language to uh, the workers of, of Ludlow and explain uh, that they had to obey the laws of the camp, uh, to put down the fists, uh, we're all in this together. Um, they spoke 24 different languages in this camp, so you can imagine uh, what a task uh, that might have been. Uh, and the people in the camp, in the old country, and even in the United States, they'd often uh, been uh, antagonistic uh, in, in, in Europe uh, because of uh, the politics in Europe. But here, they all had to stick together uh, in order to win this strike. Now, Louis Picus, in his education, also witnessed something new uh, in Ludlow, and that was the power of women. In the old country, women had stood behind their men. They were in the shadows. In Colorado, in 1914, they spoke up at meetings uh, in that big tent, deciding uh, what their policy should be, how they should handle picketing all of these many uh, issues of the greatest importance. But the women were speaking, uh, and it was the women who would have to keep the strike going. Uh, they were out there picketing while their men were in jail. Uh, and they marched with Mother Jones right here in, in, in Trinidad when she led a group of women and kids down the street demanding rights for workers. Uh, and they had to do something that was maybe even more important than picketing and more important than marching. And that was keeping families together on union strike benefits that never seemed to stretch far enough. You know, they're here in the fall and in the winter in these tents they're having to figure out, how can I feed these kids? How can I keep them clothed? And that's how strikes are won, through endurance. And the women were at the heart of that. So all of them, these Greeks, uh, men and women, the Greeks, the Italians, the Serbs, uh, the Irish, they were learning about democracy in that union tent. And that was not something that they would be learning from in the closed camps of Rockefeller's CF&I and the Victor American Fuel Company. The union in America was the greatest, I, I mean, I, I'm saying this, that and public education were the greatest sources of learning about democracy to the immigrants in the United States.
Well, uh, others are going to tell the story of how the Ludlow tent calling ended up in flames on April 20, 1914, and how a number of good union men and good union women and innocent kids died at Ludlow, including Louis Chicas. Now, there, there's a statue that's waiting to be unveiled uh, this afternoon in Trinidad. And the artist, uh, he, he could have shown uh, Louis Ticas as a warrior, you know, with his pistol in his hands. And he, uh, on that day in 1820, uh, he divided his time between the tents, trying to get water and food to the women and children who were hiding in the cellars of the tents, and taking ammunition uh, and water and food to the men who were fighting uh, in the cot above Ludlow, the machine guns of the National Guards. But the artist could have shown him uh, as, as a warrior. Uh, as a, as a warrior. Uh, and he could have shown him as a martyr dying for his <coughs> cause. But I think this artist, and I've seen you know, photographs of the statue, I think this artist made a good choice. Because he showed Louis as an organizer, uh, with his briefcase, with its union roll inside it, and the list of families who needed relief in it. And he showed him in the red bandana that the strikers wore in 1913 and 14, the red bandana around his neck. Um, and I think when you see the statue, you'll realize that it's a good, good piece of work. Uh, but. Uh, I, I like to think that uh, the statue we're going to see in the course of the monument at the Ludlow site, they're, they're made out of stone, they're made out of, uh, they're made out of metal. Uh, in fact, they're dead things and it's us who give them life. You know, it, when, you, when you look at that, it's you who are going to make that, that, make that statue live. And you give them life by, in our, we give them life in our memories, but also in what we do with those memories, and carrying this fight on into the present and <coughs> into the future. Uh, that's the statue of Louis. He has his, his right hand raised, and I like to think that he's beckoning us. He's saying, come on. Join me, Ella, Ella in, in Greek, you know. Uh, join me in getting what's due for the working men and women in America and for the immigrants who are coming to our shores and for the black and brown people who still are not fully made to be a part of America. And especially for our children. Uh, so when you see that statue, think of him saying, come on, come on, join me up here. Okay, thank you. mentioned the name of Dean Walter before, commissioner, but he was somewhere in the back and adopting the thing you heard before. His grandfather was a coal miner for 37 years and he was an immigrant from Greece. His name was Nicolaus Retsias. Retsias. Nicolaus Retsias. We just want you to say a few things and stay here. Okay. No um, as Michael said, my name is Dean Moulter. Um, county Commissioner here in Los Angeles County. Uh, this is a very, very emotional time for me because my grandfather was a Greek immigrant. He came here in 1910. And, uh, you know, there are no accidents with God. Uh, to be a commissioner at this time, this very, very time when this is all taking place, is very special. Um, I can't give enough thanks to Mr. Servos. You can see how emotional it is 
when we were talking about my grandfather and how much he's done for Mr. Kikas and in memory of him, he brings tears to his eyes. Our ancestors went through a lot. Um, and we cannot move forward without remembering our past. We cannot forget our past. I have four children, four boys, and it is good to see these young people right here, these young children right here today, because it's important for them to remember what our ancestors went through, to appreciate every little thing that we have, <coughs> to do a rock, or a nice car, we must appreciate it because somebody worked very hard for that. But um, without Mr. Servos, this could not have happened. Uh, the community, Howland is a community, I thank you. Um, Mike and Yolanda, thank you for everything that you guys do for the Ludlow Massacre. Bob, <coughs> Mr. Bob Butero, you guys do a wonderful, wonderful job every year. Without you guys doing this every year, possibly it will be forgotten, but hopefully somebody will pick it up when you hand off the baton. Um, they want, they've done a really, really good job with, with the museum. Um, and Mr. Tikas and what he stood for is just going to be uh, a very, very good uh, addition to the museum. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm just humbled to, to have everybody here. I mean, from Florida, Greece, Denver, uh, it's just amazing. Um, as I was meeting people as they were coming in, I don't, can't remember her name, but she's sitting right over there. And I was telling her about my grandfather, and I said, we have no family here in the United States. I even did DNA recently to try to find family from Greece. Um, I'm also Northern Italian and also Sicilian. And my grandfather met my grandmother uh, going for goat cheese. My grandparents were Sicilian. <laughs> right? um, they milked goats and, and made cheese and ricotta. And that's how my grandparents met. But I told this woman back in over there, uh, I have no family here. And she says, while well, we're here, we're all family. And that defines what's going on. It, when Mr. Tikas, he was Greek, but the workers back then were all ethnicity. They all worked together. And they were family. They had to stick together and fight for what was right. And without them, we would not have better conditions, better, better wages today. So I just want to welcome from the bottom of my heart, very emotionally, welcome to Los Angeles County. Um, and as an old sausage maker used to tell me in the store, take your time leaving and hurry back. <laughs> Him to stay here because it's been very lonely at the podium. I mean, <laughs> uh, I'm going to invite some more people to come to the podium because we want to take a very nice picture. But you mentioned that Mike is emotional, and I'm going to tell you a true story. Yes, he's emotional, and he asked me to help him. Uh, Mike asked me to help him control his emotions. So this, it's a true story. This morning at 6:30 in the morning, we went in the parking lot. And we were practicing, but then I started crying. <laughs> so he gave up the practice, and we saw what he saw. Today. That's it. No practice. We said we keep it light, right? But it's a true story. All right, I'm going to invite here another family, two, two, the two nephews of Louis Dickas and their families. We want you to come to the podium. Just you can say whatever you want to say. But just smile because we're going to take a nice picture. <laughs> and um, I would like to invite also every single donor that is here today. And there's no order, there's no alphabetical order, there's no order of how much money they gave. They're all donors. So I'm starting with Mr. Vasilios Yutis.
Everybody come up. Elias Anastasopoulos and his wife. Oh, when you hear your name and your spouse is here, please come up. This is going to be a nice picture. So Vasilis Yurtis, Elias Anastasopoulos and Eleni Anastasopoulos, the representatives of Chapter Creek of Denver, the Rumeliotans of Colorado, Ahepa Chapter 145 Denver, John Andrianopoulos, Stanley Ketchius, Michael Bouveris, John Balafas, or family, Vasilios Servos, Vasilis Pandazopoulos, John Stamatoulos, Alexander Stamatorio, or their family, Gas Dames and his wife, Paula, Van Cretan Association of America, their president, Mr. Grant Martin. I feel that one of the nephews would like to say something. Είμαι πολύ συγκινημένο και αισθάνομαι υπερήφανο που βρίσκομαι για τρίτη φορά στο Τρινιτά για εκδηλώσει που αφορούν το θείο μου, Λουί Τίχα. Η κυβέρνηση τη Αμερική και η πολιτεία του Κολοράδου τιμούν και αναγνωρίζουν τον αγώνα του Λουί Τίχα. Η Ένωση Ανθρακορύφων θα πρέπει να αισθάνεται υπερήφανη που τιμούν ένα μέλο τη, τον Λουί Τίχα, για τον αγώνα του και την προσφορά του στο κοινωνικό σύνολο σε δύσκολε στιγμέ στην εποχή εκείνη. Αμίγκο ή αμίγκο, ερμάνο ή ερμάνα. I am very moved and I feel very proud that amongst you for the third time in Trinidad for celebrations that concern my uncle Louis Tica. The government of the United States and the um, state of Colorado recognize and honor the struggle of Luis Ticas. The union of coal miners must be extremely proud that, uh, that honor a member of theirs, Luis Ticas, for his struggle and the, and the um, contribution to the total of society in difficult times in a very difficult uh, period of history. Το ίδιο ελληνισμό συνεχίζει να τιμά σημαντικού Έλληνε και ο Ανδριάντα του Λουί Τίκα θα αποτελέσει παρακαταθήκη στην ιστορία του τόπου για τι επόμενε γενιέ. Η ονομασία τη λεωφόρου Trinidad Landlow σε λεωφόρο Λουί Τίκα δείχνει ότι υπάρχει δημοκρατία σε αυτόν τον τόπο που τιμούν ανθρώπου για την προσφορά του ανεξαρτήτω εθνικότητα. Σα ευχαριστώ όλου που τιμήσατε το Θείο μου Λουί Τίκα για τι εκδηλώσει που διοργανώσατε. The foundation, the foundation of Hellenes continues to honor prominent Greeks. And, and the statue of Louis Tikas will be, become um, proof in the history of this land for the future generations. The naming of the uh, country road in Trinidad to the uh, road uh, or highway Louis Tikas, it is um, a manifestation that there is democracy in this country that honors people for their contribution, regardless of their ethnicity. I thank you all, who, all you who are here today, to honor my uncle Louis Dickens and for all these great uh, events that you have put together. <laughs> On behalf of my husband, Emmanuel Marigodakis, and myself, we live in Tarpon Springs, Florida. He is also the great nephew of Elias Pandivakis, and uh, we're happy to be here. Thank you very much for, for coming, and thank all the dignitaries, especially Michael Zedvos. Thank you very much. I've been talking to His Eminence uh, for a couple of months now about coming down here this weekend. And uh, he called me up yesterday, he wanted to make sure he'd be here for the uh, documentary. 
So I told him it wouldn't be till about one o'clock. So he made it early. <laughs> yeah. Because at one o'clock? <laughs> yeah. Or did, am, I, am I too late? No, no. <laughs> You're You're also early. on time for lunch. Also. <laughs> <laughs> on time for lunch. <laughs> Society, uh, in the Spinisa Timia Pandazopoulou, uh, Miss, Miss Pandazopoulou, the daughter of Mr. Vasilis Pandazopoulos, who is one of the donors, he's in Greece, and his friend is giving him the play by play of what's happening here. So, <laughs> we'd like to say thank you. And, and we decorated the microphone. <laughs> 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 My name is uh, Lucas Lucas. Lego <laughs> Lucas Lucas, a former Colorado, originally met for Istanbul, uh, served a lot in the massacre. Είμαι εδώ για να αντιπροσωπεύσω τους Ρωμαλιώτες του Κολοράδο. I'm here to represent the Ρωμαλιώτες του Κολοράδο. First of all, I would like to thank Mr. Zerbos for his vision. He had to, uh, to create such a monument for Mr. Picas, Luis Picas, for his honoring his uh, work and dedication to the workers of America. It's never too late after 103 years to recognize uh, such a massacre and the works of uh, Louis Picas who gave a, became a big example to the whole workers of America. I'm proud to be here to represent the Remaliotos of Colorado Make his memory be eternal. And that was in the last year. The first one that was in the last year. The first one that was in the last year. Hello, my name is Timia Bogosopoulou. It is an honor to be here today. The honor for me today being here as a Greek American is that there are many, many tikes in this world that have brought many things, many special things as Greeks uh, to everybody around. Uh, doing this honor and honoring this man is wonderful because it gives us a noima, a meaning that at the end of the day, hard work is never forgotten. Um, Thank you very much to Trinidad. Um, I am here in honor of my father, who is a very big um, supporter, advocate, anything to do with Greece. Um, has pushed all of us all of our lives. Uh, he really wanted me to change his ticket so he could be here today, and I said no. Um, that's not going to happen, so he sent me. Um, I'm very happy that I came. Um, I'm very thankful again for Trinidad, what you have done. I'm very happy knowing that there is something here that is, uh, again, of uh, Greek descent, that it was made possible by Greek. Um, I am not um, giving uh, any more power to anybody else, um, but it's wonderful knowing our generations that so many of our ancestors, our Greek fellow men, our fighters, uh, did so much for us to go forward. Uh, in this life, um, again, I'm very happy for the statue. I can't wait to see it. Um, thank you. 
Thank you, Trinidad. Uh, I don't know what to say. With a small uh, delay, we're moving on to the presentation of the documentary. Um, Mrs. Froso Chuka from Greece, right? She's going to present it. I heard a rumor and I want to make sure that it's correct. This was the property of Ed, right? Correct? No. No? I'll explain it when I come up. Okay. So you'll explain because I heard something about the release that we'll be able to use it. That's what I want to do. I don't want to pirate. I want to get. <laughs> the decoration on the microphone was necessary because <coughs> this is where you're going to hear the sound. There's no sound in the hotel for the projector, so you can hear the sound of the of the movie through our microphone. That's why we had to decorate it appropriately. Uh, the, I, I, hope, I hope the quality is good and that we can all feel okay. Um, I just want to say a couple of words. First of all, the film was, uh, it's not a property of it. Uh, it's a property of the Apostolic but the best uh, uh, non-profit uh, uh, company that makes these types of documentaries. But we had, um, uh, because the film was a big success in Greece, Elf asked us to, for a year uh, to, to have the exclusivity to show it on their TV, and we couldn't show it, uh, we couldn't upload it to the internet during that time. But our, our um, uh, agreement with them is over, and uh, especially after Mr. Servos uh, uh, asked me to, to do this before we had the, the event, uh, last weekend I made it public on the internet, so it's open for anyone who wants to see it. It may not be uh, easy to find it through Google because it's not yet, uh, it doesn't have so many searches yet, so it doesn't come up on the first page. And you, but I can give you the exact address to go and download it or see it. If you would, um, if you would give me, I have here uh, some pages with uh, you could write your email, and I can send you the exact uh, information on how to get the thing. Uh, let me, you want to pass that down? Anyone who wants more information on the theme, there is also one other thing that was made about um, about Ladlo, which is called Palikari. Two films were made in Greece these past years. Uh, ours is one, and then the Palikari is the other one, and we were hoping to show that too, but we don't have, um, we only have a DVD of it, and um, these new computers don't take DVDs anymore, we know how it is. And, um, but if you want information on how to find that thing too, I can send it to you on the email. I can get in touch with uh, the producer of that thing, we're friends, and I can ask her how if you can uh, give me the information for it. What's the name of this? When you search it, I know it's not this is called yet. Ladlo Greek Americans on the Colorado Cold War in the Colorado Cold War, and it's on email. I will upload it on uh, on uh, YouTube also. But right now it's on email and good one, so you can find it there. I I, I tried to, to do a search before I came, and I saw that it didn't come up on the first page. If there are enough searches, then it starts coming up uh, earlier. Um, I want to. Is, People have asked me how come in Greece we're interested in Tikas, how come, especially non-Greeks. Um, they say, I mean, nobody knows here about Ladlo, how come there are two things made in Greece about Ladlo? <laughs> and uh, I want to, to point out that it's uh, because of Zizi Papanikolas in his book in 1970, who saved the memory of Louis Tikas that we know about him today. All of us learned about Tikas from that book. It's Zizi Papanikolas, uh, the Louis Tikas story, buried on some. In Greek, it's called uh, uh, Louis Tikas o Amiroloitos. It was translated in Greek. They buried well in Greek, uh, I believe it's now in the second or third edition in Greece too. Um, so, and then the, the other people I want to thank for saving the memory of Ladlo is the Union. 
because the, all these years, the Union of the Mine Workers every year commemorates this, uh, what happened there, and not only what happened there, but also what happens in the Hastings mines, and they are um, the force that keeps these memories alive, so otherwise they would all be forgotten. I will end so we can see the film. I'm not going to say much more. I just want to acknowledge one non Greek who is here, who is a descendant of the, the, one of the families that were killed in the massacre. Uh, four or five people of the family were killed in the massacre. It was the, the father, the mother, and the children. One of the children was a baby, just born baby. And uh, that's Linda Linville, who is here, and you will see her in the film also. Uh, <laughs> She gives a very touching account of what happened uh, to her family, the, the Costas family. I, I originally I even thought that the Costas family was Greek, but then I found that they were Italian. <laughs> so, and that's an important aspect to, to keep in mind, that really, really this is an international thing, it's not just the Greeks. I mean, we as Greeks may be more interested in the story of the Picas and the Greeks, but really, Picas would not be there um, as if, if the Union did not need bilingual organizers to organize all the different ethnicities that were there and there were about 30 ethnicities in the countries with 10,000 people in, uh, in the strike there was a very big strike and a very long and important strike so i will start with that and if everything goes well with the technology we will probably see the film i see it's not there anymore Don't worry. <laughs>
And the coal was black And the blood was red And miners that dared organize Always wound up dead And in those days of anger A man of peace arose And words were the weapons That Louis Ticas chose In Walsenburg, in Ludlow, and in Sopris 